Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We would like to welcome you to Westminster Presbyterian Church this lovely morning. If you're new or visiting, we do have welcome packets in the pews in front of you, as well as some welcome gifts out in the narthex that we encourage you to take. Uh, we are in the midst of our stewardship season. This is our second week of stewardship. And each week we've been highlighting a new ministry, and I'll have Camille come up in just a second to talk about one of them. But uh, today is our candy caravan, and so that's what she'll be talking about. Also, next week is our in-gathering Sunday, where we'll be having our fourth annual chili cook-off. And so I know it's getting a bit cold out there, so come on in for a bowl of nice warm chili. Uh, I think we have about six people signed up so far. If you're interested in participating, you can still sign up to bring in some chili and have people vote on it and maybe win a little prize. So think about that. And next week, we're also celebrating Veterans Day. So if you are a veteran, we encourage you to uh, wear your cap to worship next Sunday. And the PWC is having their nut sale. You know, it's great. They have some mixed nuts. They have uh, chocolate clusters with nuts and just lots of good stuff. So uh, that's in the fellowship hall as well. And I encourage you to go in there and uh, purchase some. And now I'd like to invite up Camille to talk about our candy caravan. Good morning. So our stewardship campaign is love one another. So today we are going to love on our neighbors and love on all the children and everybody in our community. It is just so nice to be able to get back out and have another community event. So our candy caravan is going to be run a little bit like our Easter event. We'll have tables set up outside and we're going to have people standing there and we'll have cars drive through and we're just going to hand out, we have some trinkets, we have candy. Um, we have had a wonderful array that has been donated. We're, of course, always looking for more. Last year, we had around 400. 
We're planning for at least 600 this year just because we have seen it everywhere. We have seen it on Facebook. Um, people are talking about it. I saw a lady that made a list of all the events that were going on in the community and we were part of that. So we're hoping that we can reach out to not only our five block radius, but just our community in general. So if anybody just feels the need to want to come and volunteer, we will always take more volunteers. We'll take people if you wanna just stand and wave at people, if you wanna hand out candy, um, whatever you want to do, we are just going to love on our neighbors. So today from 2 to 3.30, we have our candy caravan, and we hope to see you there. rise for our gathering hymns for all the saints 529 and find us faithful on 497.
Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful fall day. We praise you for all that you have given us. We have gathered to worship in your presence and sing your praises. Be with us as we worship today and make your blessings abundance and grace us with your presence. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Our New Testament les uh, lesson comes from Romans 12, 9 through 21. If you want to follow along with me, it's on page 162 of your pew Bibles. Romans 12, 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Undo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering and persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. And do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone for evil, evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good.
we do thank our choir for leading us in worship this morning. And today is All Saints Day, and so it is our tradition to honor those who have gone before us this past year. And I will direct you to the lavender sheet that you were handed as you came in with a list of those we will honor. Before we do that, we will also recognize the gifts that have been given to this congregation, many gifts that have been given through others and in memory of others. And so you will see the use of these gifts this past year in our ministries and how they have been given to honor. And so do we do want to take a time to dedicate these gifts? And if you will follow along with me in our liturgy this morning. God of ages, we praise you for all your servants who have done justice, loved mercy, and walked humbly with their God. For apostles and martyrs and saints of every time and place, who in life and death have witnessed to your truth. We praise you, O God. For all your servants who have faithfully served you, witnessed bravely, and died in faith, who still are shining lights in the world. We praise you, O God. For those we have known and loved, who by their faithful obedience and steadfast hope have shown the same mind that was in Christ Jesus for the ministries that have become possible because of the gifts given in memory of them. We praise you, O oh God. Keep us grateful for their witness and these memorials. May they help us all to grow in faith, to reach out in love, and to follow in the way of Christ. We praise you, O oh God, and we dedicate these memorials to your glory. Let us remember in silent prayer those who have gone on to the resurrection. Kathy Buck. Lim Layram. Barb Orcutt. Donna Turnmeyer. Donald Erickson. Robert Knudsen. Lord God, we praise you this morning for all those who have gone before us. We praise you for the dedication their lives showed to you as children of Christ, living out in this world, sharing the kindness that you have given us. God, today we'd like to pray for Ara Nelson as she was uh, given a new prosthetic leg this previous week. We ask that you continue to give her strength and to heal from her surgery. We pray for Kay Shear's friend, Margaret List, whose daughter, Joanne, has cancer on her back. God, we lift her up to you and ask for healing. God, we pray for Ozzy Earl's sister-in-law, Barbara, who has had a heart attack. We ask for recovery for her. God, surround her in your healing hands and give her strength. God, we pray for Charlie Lanchenton. We praise you that he was able to stand the other day after the surgeries he's had on his legs. And God, we ask for continued strength to be able to walk. God, we continue to pray for Jim Huskin, who is recovering from a recent hospitalization. We thank you, God, that he is doing better and we continue to offer him up for strength and healing. 
God, we pray for Dick Robinson, who has been placed on hospice. We ask, God, that you help him in this time of transition. Surround him in your joy and your peace. God, we continue to pray for Pastor Mike and Colleen as they go in their eighth week of their sabbatical. God, we thank you for the time they have to renew their spirits in your love, your hope, and your joy. God, we pray for our Candy Caravan event today, that people will experience the kindness that we'd like to show, and maybe that people will also come to know you through that kindness. And so, God, we ask that you hear us now in a time of silent meditation. And God, you know what is on our hearts, whether we share it aloud or whether we hold it quietly to ourselves. We thank you for the, all the prayers that you answer. We thank you for having good judgment for our lives. And God, we thank you for your responses to us. And we ask that you hear us now as we pray the prayer your Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we have ways of giving back to our God, whether it is through our time, our energies, our talents, or our gifts. And God has given so much to us. So let us give it back to him in the ways that we can. And God, we just ask that whatever we give to you, you will use for your kingdom purposes. Amen.
Now let us turn to one another and greet each other with the peace of Christ. And as you return to your seats, I'd like to dismiss children ages four years old to second grade for Sunshine Singers. Miss Emma is right there in the back waiting for you. And so you can start some practicing. And our Old Testament lesson this morning, if you'd like to follow along, can be found on page 242 of your Old Testament. It is the book of Ruth, chapter 2, verses 17 to 23. So that's on page 242. It's Ruth, chapter 2, verses 17 to 23. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. She picked it up and came into the town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gleaned. Then she took out and gave her what was left over after she herself had been satisfied. Her mother-in-law said to her, where did you glean today, and where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, the name of the man with whom I worked today is Boaz. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, The man is a relative of ours, one of our nearest kin. Then Ruth the Moabite said, He even said to me, Stay close by my servants, until they have finished all my harvest. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is better, my daughter, that you go out with his young women, otherwise you might be bothered in another field. So she stayed close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvest. And she lived with her mother-in-law. So many of us might know the story of Ruth and Naomi. Naomi has had a bit of a hard time if we look at chapters one. And our circumstances can affect our outlook on life, right? You know those times when good things are happening to us. We feel as if life is going our way. We believe we are in God's favor as blessing upon blessing come to us, whether little or small. Sometimes it's something as simple as finding a parking space easily in a crowded lot. Or perhaps someone comes by with a loaf of bread, some soup, or cookies. These small gifts will make us inwardly smile. We think that these joys and blessings and we attribute them to God, and we are thankful. But then the opposite also happens. Something little or big, some event happens to us, and we become convinced that the world is against us, that God is angry at us. And when these events occur, we lose hope. We become enveloped in grief or sadness. Our faith in humanity can become enshrouded in negativity. And we see this happen a little bit in the story of Ruth. In the beginning of the book, we hear about the difficulties Naomi has faced. She has lost her husband. She has lost her two sons. And she was so dejected by these losses that she told people 
no longer call me Naomi. And Naomi was a word that meant pleasant. She said, call me Mara, which means bitter, for the Lord has dealt harshly with me. And we know that the loss of her sons, the loss of her husband, was also a loss of her livelihood. We know that the culture of the day didn't offer an easy time for widows. One of the reasons why God so often put commands in the Bible about helping widows and orphans. The loss of these men in her life meant she wouldn't have a means to provide for herself. Now, none of us like to have bad things happen to us. In the face of difficulty, we can often question God, wondering why it has to be this way, why this particular thing happened. We get frustrated, especially if it's of bigger events in the world. We wonder, why do tragedies have to happen? And then we get sucked into this mood of negativity. And I think we are all prone to finding ourselves in this state at some point or another. Yet sometimes, it's just that we've lost sight of the bigger picture. If we trust that all events happen for God's glory, then all we need to do is wait expectantly with hope and trust that God's purposes will be played out. But that's easier said than done. And I don't think that we are very patient people. But we lose ourselves in the moment, in that moment of negativity, in the moment of difficulty. We lose ourselves. We can't imagine that that difficulty will ever disappear. I don't think Naomi thought that she would ever be able to get out of that situation. Perhaps she thought she was forever doomed to be Mara, to be bitter and live a life of difficulty. And I think that's hard for us because we have an ideal in our minds, an ideal of how life should be, of this perfect, carefree life. We want and sometimes believe that God should be making us happy all the time with earthly comforts. We know God is all-powerful, and so we want things to be made better. Yet we sometimes place all these expectations on God and ignore our responsibility to one another. God calls us to love one another. We are God's children. And as we talked about last week in the parable of the Good Samaritan, we must see everyone as our neighbor. We must treat everyone with kindness and mercy. We are here to be instruments of God's grace and love. People's actions toward us can affect our attitude and our outlook. Think about how people have acted towards you recently. Maybe if you are driving down the highway and someone cuts in front of you, you're likely to get a little angry, perhaps a few choice words. But if you are in the line, maybe at Caribou, and someone ahead of you pays for your coffee, you're likely to be kind of happy. It's a small gesture, but it changes your mood. Kindness has a beautiful way of rippling outwards. Kindness that is given to us will in turn cause us to be kind toward others. And so in this passage, we see Boaz treating Ruth with kindness. But I think we should look back at Boaz's family tree and see how kindness ran through his family. I wonder if the knowledge of kindness his mother experienced influenced his kindness to others. And if we look at his family history, we'll, we will know his mother was Rahab. She was the woman who helped a couple of spies, who helped hide them when the town had discovered them, who helped them escape when the town wanted to kill them. She was kind to them when others wanted to only get rid of them. 
She had faith in God, and she showed kindness to these spies at great risk to herself. And God kept her safe when Israel took the city. In the Gospel of Matthew, she is even mentioned as having great faith and being commended for her act of kindness. And then we learn in biblical genealogies that she is the mother of Boaz. I imagine he would have heard this story from his mother, the story of deliverance, the story of the kindness she experienced from God, and the kindness that she had given, all because she believed in God, because she understood his power and his glory, and because she had faith. And Boaz shared that kindness he knew and had experienced. We know that kindness can change a family. Kindness can transform lives by giving us hope. And we know it is important to be kind and care for others. When we cultivate that kindness toward others, our hearts and our souls will be transformed. By opening our hearts to be more kind, to see and to address the needs in the world, we take the view off of ourselves and we turn it towards others. We turn it to God's children. We become outwardly focused, kingdom oriented. And sometimes we need a little spark of that kindness to reignite the hope that is laying dormant. We see a spark ignited and transformation in Naomi, as she goes from a mindset of bitterness to a mindset of joy and blessing because of Boaz's kindness to Ruth. Where do you see God working in your life? Who have you experienced kindness from lately? What kindness have you experienced that rejuvenates your soul that inspires you towards compassion and seeing God's love and wanting to share that with others. We know that it was tough for Naomi and Ruth as widows, but we know that God will also provide. We know that God has set forth commands to protect more unfortunate people. And here are some of the laws that I saw on gleaning, and I'm not going to include all of them because there's quite a few. But there's one in Leviticus that says, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the, gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. And then another one in Deuteronomy. When you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back and get it. It shall be left for the alien, the orphan, and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all your undertakings. When you beat your olive trees, do not strip what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, do not glean what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I am commanding you to do this. These passages show us that there is an awareness that wealth is not equally distributed. There is an awareness that some are in a more powerful position to give to share and to help. And I think God has blessed us. We too should act in these ways because everything that God has given us is a gift. And if we become too greedy, if we want to strip everything bare and become miserly, but these laws were guideposts, encouraging us to share with others showing us that God has given in abundance so we do not need to strip our fields bare, but to share with others. 
to leave enough for others to be provided for because God has provided for us. These laws help to protect at-risk people to ensure that they could support themselves or their families, that this would only occur if these laws were followed. There were likely to be some people who would strip the fields bare, who would collect all of the harvest and leave none for those in need. But in the case of Boaz, we see that these gleaning laws worked as intended. We see through these laws how to be kind and generous. We are shown how God uses people's labors to help others. We see how the memory of kindness can influence us to be kind to others, since we might model what we have experienced. The kindness in the gleaning laws also provided a better way for people to gain support. These laws that allowed them to glean gave them a purpose. They were working for it. They were given self-respect because of it. They were learning a skill. It helped avoid exploitation. It helped them avoid other sources, such as begging or slavery. But all this depended on people following these laws. And we are beginning to develop modern-day versions of this, of these gleaning laws, of stripping the fields bare. And I can see it in the way that corporations and grocery stores will handle their food waste. There is so much food waste in the world. And many grocery stores will simply chuck food in the dumpsters, lock the gates where the dumpsters are, not letting people use this food, not even donating it to food banks. So there is all this waste. But if we were to adopt such practices as these gleaning laws, perhaps these grocery stores could share their excess. We could share their excess. And I read this article in The Guardian, which I found very interesting, and it reminded me of this. And it says that, this is from 2016, France has become the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food, forcing them instead to donate it to charities and food banks. Under a law passed unanimously by the French Senate, as of Wednesday, large shops will no longer bin good quality food approaching its best before dates. Charities will be able to give out millions more free meals each year to people struggling to afford to eat. This law follows a grassroots campaign in France by shoppers, anti-poverty campaigners, and those opposed to food waste. And I just thought that was beautiful. It was a way to show we don't need to be greedy. We don't need to cling to everything, to strip our fields bare, because God has given us so much, and so we should be able to share our excess with others. These laws were to help guide us as a society, to help us look after one another, to give us a chance at showing and receiving kindness. And Ruth receives that kindness as she is able to glean in a safer environment, as she is able to be given extra, as she was shown hope. And we read in our passage that she was able to bring home an ephah of barley. Now, who here is familiar with biblical weights and measurements? Yeah, I'm not so much either, so I had to do some, do some research on this, but an ephah was about 33 liters. It could be between 20 and 40 pounds. And I can't imagine having to carry about that much barley on my back, but here she did it. It was enough for 10 days of food. And so we see she was given abundantly, a great amount because of Boaz's generosity and kindness, because he told his men to leave extra. We see God working through Boaz to care for his people, to work through others to provide opportunities of kindness, so God will be glorified. 
And God works through people in our lives as well. Think again about the people who have been kind to you. How does it inspire you? How does it give you hope? And even in our passage in Romans today, we see instructions for how to live well, to live peaceably with others, to do good. So how are we doing good? Think about what God has done for you. Think about God's kindness. Too often we can take it for granted. But God has been kind to us giving us all more than we deserve. And we have opportunities to be kind every day. And we must respond to these opportunities. We must keep our hearts and eyes open to see where these opportunities are, to see those ways in which we can reach out. And that is what we are trying to do during this stewardship time. That is what we are doing with our five-block focus. We are trying to open our eyes to the needs in our community, to find ways in which we can share God's kindness and love with others. But we must examine our own lives and see where we have received kindness and let that inspire us to be kind towards others, to know that God has provided us with all that we need. So let us live in such a way which we acknowledge that kindness and give back to others in a way that gives glory to God. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you so much for what you have done for us. You have given to all of us abundantly in so many different ways. God, we know you still have children out there in need. And that, God, we can help, that we can be your servants, that we can reach out and show your love, that we can give to others through our abundance, which you have given to us. And so, God, we ask that you work in our hearts today. Help open our eyes to see the opportunities you put before us day after day, opportunities in which we can reach out and share your love. And so God, help us to inspire in us that joy of service and the joy of kindness to others. Amen. And now let us rise as we sing our closing hymn, Faith of Our Fathers, hymn number 530.
And now let us receive our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And let us go forth in the power, peace, and protection of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.